Black Friday, Black Friday, Black Friday. Oh, how I hate you. No matter how much I try, you make me spend pretty much all of my money and 2019, it's just been no different. I've done a few videos now for Black Friday, but today I wanted to go through my 11 pickups so far. I'm gonna be doing a separate video though for eShop pickups, but I will say I picked up a few of those like eShop card games today. So I'm gonna be sneaking them in here as well. But with that, hit subscribe. The support the last few months, it's been absolutely amazing. So thank you to everyone new to the family here. Hit like and let me know in the comments below what you picked up over this weekend. It's gonna make me feel a little bit better about spending my money by telling me how you spent yours. Let's get this thing started. Okay, so I picked up three games from Walmart, first of all, this year. That was my first stop. And first up, Lego Jurassic World. Probably, to be honest, the weakest of my pickups today, but this is one I still hadn't added to my collection. I will say I'm pretty fed up of the, you know, the Lego formula at this point. But this one, it was 15 bucks, it's not bad. I love the films. Lego games have a great way of adding like a sense of humor to classic scenes from films. I'm looking forward to seeing that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to jumping into this one. So if you've played a Lego game before, you should really know exactly what to expect here by now. This, it's a platforming, puzzle solving, collector fun essentially. It's all then done with a Jurassic Park skin. It covers the first four films, so Jurassic Park 1, 2, 3, and then Jurassic World. So it should have a ton of content. So next up we have Bloodstained, and I have this actually on the PS4. I was initially going to grab this on release on the Switch, but there was just too many issues that were being reported then. You know, graphical glitches, input lag. But the big issue for me back then was, well, a big one, it's frame rate problems. Fortunately though, the developer, they're slowly releasing patches to get the issues ironed out. And at 19.99, I am happy to add this to the collection and just getting that chance to take it on the go, honestly. Now, for those that don't know, this is essentially a Metroidvania title, except platforming and of course combat. It's definitely challenging, that's for sure. And this one, it's so popular because it's essentially just a successor to the Castlevania series, as its development was led by the series producer, Koji Igarashi. This one, it started life on Kickstarter. It's got a hell of a fan base. They targeted just $500,000 as a goal, and that sounds like a lot, but they actually did that in just four hours of launching the campaign. This one, it ended up going on to set the Kickstarter record for a video game when it raised $5.5 million total. Now I will say Shenmue 3 did end up beating this one in the end, but it's still a hugely impressive number, there's no doubt about that. So next the game I have digitally, but I really, really wanted to add this one to my Switch collection. $39.99, quite frankly, it was a little steep on release for me to, you know, double dip. But now at $19.99 from Walmart, Friday the 13th Ultimate Slasher Edition. Now I did, I will say I almost picked up um, Dead by Daylight instead, but this one, it's just too much fun. The setup is great and I love the movie, so it's one I do constantly revisit, I will say that. Now this ultimate version it even throws in the DLC, a limited poster that's actually really stunning. It's actually gonna end up on my wall over there. And then there's also some costumes and emote packs. With this, I will say don't expect anything too you know, deep. The concept, it's simple. Four camp counselors versus one Jason, and you're gonna be rotating between matches, eventually gaining control of Jason himself. Basically, there's two options here. You either kill everyone as Jason, that's worth, honestly, the price of entry alone, or escape, that's it. If you're a fan of the films, there's a lot to like here. There's a lot of fan service going on, and even a lot of recognizable characters and voice actors from the films who return for this game. So next up, let's talk Target, and I picked up two from them this year. First up, Killer Queen Black. I've played maybe 30 minutes of this max, so don't expect too much in the way of like amazing gameplay in the background here, but I've played the arcade unit a lot now. It's such a strange little game with a pretty strong cult following actually. It was an easy one to add with Target only asking 15 bucks here, and it even comes with like Joy-Con stickers. I'm never gonna use them honestly, but I like free stuff, it's, it's better than nothing. 
Killer Queen Black was originally an arcade title that's now found its way to home consoles. It's gained a huge following, I'll say that much at this point, and it's incredibly, I think unique's probably the word I'm looking for. Describing it, it's just, it sounds strange. But here what we get, it's an eight player real time strategy platformer where two teams of four compete to win. Now to win, you can do one of three things and each one's weirder than the last one. Assassinate the enemy queen three times, simple enough. Fill your hive with berries or bring the giant snail back to your base. Weird, yes, I told you, but I will say it's a ton of fun. It has strangely deep gameplay and when your team works together, the payoff here, it's awesome. There's such a great feeling to win in these battles. You know, there's a, there's a lot actually involved in them. So pick this one up. So my last one from Target at 15 bucks, Disney Classics Aladdin and Lion King, and I'm really excited about this one, actually. Probably one of my favorite ones I got today. I have the SNES versions of both these titles. I never wanted to pay the $30 original asking price. I know it has a few different builds and features on here, but it just didn't seem worth it, honestly. This, though, it was the right price, 15 bucks. And I'm looking forward to revisiting these hard as hell games again. Don't let the cute Disney visuals deceive you, that's for sure. Now, if you grew up in the 90s, these, they shouldn't need too much in the way of introduction. Two of the great Disney platformers on one cartridge. And then what they've done on top of that is they've added a ton of extra content. You've got new features, new game modes, multiple versions of both games, and there's some nice art extras in there as well. One complaint I will say is Aladdin on the Genesis and then on the SNES, they're two very different games from two different publishers. And here we're only getting the Genesis version. Now both I will say they're very good games, but I'm a SNES Aladdin fanboy. So I wish that one was included. Now let's take a look at GameStop. They had some of the best deals, but the stock at my store, or at least my local store, unfortunately, it was pretty low this year. I went yesterday on Thanksgiving in like literally the first five minutes of opening and there wasn't too much there. I did still though get a good couple of pickups though. First up, Forager. Again, I've only played about 30 minutes of this one. It's one I kept meaning to pick up and it just never kind of happened, you know how it is. But I'm excited to get into this one though. It refused, they've been really positive. I really like the visual style, even though I think people are kind of overdoing the pixel art style right now. They seem to have got it right here. And then it's got that kind of repetitive yet addictive formula that seems to suck me in. So yeah, Forager, 19.99, good deal. This physical version even included a poster and a sticker set as a bonus. Again, not gonna use it, but it's nice to have it. So Forager is a 2D open world game inspired by some true greats. Think basically Salda. Here we explore the world, gather items, manage resources, craft items, structures, solve puzzles, level up, raid dungeons, and then of course fight. There's very little else to it. This isn't really, you know, story driven, but just seeing where you can go and what you can create while traveling over multiple islands, that was enough for me to add it to the collection. So my last pickup for GameStop, this is kind of a highlight for me, honestly, again, next to the Aladdin and Lion King one. Um, it's another one that's been on my list to play for a while. I just didn't get round to it, but Everspace Stellar Edition. Not the best saving in the world, honestly, $29.99 instead of $39.99, but it did enough to tempt me in, and I mean, it's in my hand now, so obviously, they won. But I love anything sci-fi. I love the game called Elite Dangerous, which was seriously, seriously challenging. So I'm hoping this can be something similar, a bit more arcadey though, on my Switch. Now, Everspace Stellar Edition is basically 3D space combat, beautiful visuals, but then it's combined with roguelike elements. Roguelike, for those that don't know, means basically challenging as hell and expect to die a lot and then repeat. It's for that reason in this game you actually play a clone so you can just keep on coming back to life. This though, it does also include a digital art book, a soundtrack and the Encounters DLC featuring a new player ship, side missions, new weapons and then alien life forms. This one, I, I know this much, it requires some patience but the story is supposed to be fantastic. Refuse, they've been really positive, and I can't honestly believe it's taken me this long to pick it up, but I'm really happy to finally have it. Okay, so the last store, my four pickups here, Best Buy. 
Let's start with Collection of Mana. Again, I was always going to be getting this one. I just needed time to get through these, you know, three huge games. I was surprised to see it knocked down to 19.99 though, so I went ahead and grabbed it. I'm not sure when I'm honestly going to get time to finish these ones up, but I will, of course, get round to them eventually. So for those that, I mean, I don't think there's going to be many of you, but for those that don't know, the Collection of Mana brings together basically three classic JRPGs. Final Fantasy Adventure or Mystic Quest, dependent on your region. That was released in 1991 for the Game Boy, so expect some black and white graphics here. Secret of Mana followed this in 1993 on the SNES, and that's an exceptional game and it's worth experiencing for pretty much everyone. And then finally, it includes the Trials of Mana. This one was released in 1995, but never outside of Japan. So for many, including myself, that's the reason to pick this one up. These are just great JRPGs. It's all very kind of old school, as I said, with the graphics and true to those original formats. So you do need to be okay with that before you go into this one. So last up for physical, I'm really, really looking forward to this one as well. I was surprised to actually find a copy at my Best Buy, honestly, but Raiden 5 Director's Cut. It's a bullet hell title, this one. I'm looking forward to getting some challenge out of this, and for $19.99 again, it was an absolute steal. It's also a limited edition, which I guess they're... I mean, I guess they all are. I doubt there was a standard edition, but it comes with a nice little concept art book and a mini CD soundtrack. Now the Raiden game series, it hails back to 1990, releasing on everything from the Atari Jaguar through to Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Now this one, it continues the story of previous entries, but to be honest, you don't come here for the story, you come here for the challenging bullet hell gameplay. Expect to die constantly, expect tons of enemies, and expect to have a whole lot of patience as you try to survive this one. I'm not expecting much in longevity. The, these sort of titles, they're pretty quick to get over. It's more about high scores and then gradually boosting that difficulty level until it's an absolute nightmare. So, okay, so finally, last up, I picked up two of those digital game cards I mentioned. These were both from Best Buy because they're discounted like the eShop sale that's currently happening. First off, I grabbed the Hotline Miami collection for $12.50. I've played them both before, I think it was the PS4 maybe, but these are some seriously messed up games. I got this for like 12, 12 bucks-ish. Think though, early days Grand Theft Auto, you know, that top-down view, but it meets like a David Lynch-esque storytelling. I have no idea what the hell is going on, but I know I have a good time in this world. This one, it actually includes Hotline Miami 1 and 2, and these are basically, as I said, ultra-violent top-down shooters where you get a target, a location, and you're basically out to get them. That's all there is to it. Combine all of this though with some truly weird storytelling, and then it's really the neon visuals here that are gonna instantly grab you as well. On top of all of that then, you've got an awesome soundtrack as well. I promise you though, after all of those kind of like visual elements, the gameplay is gonna keep you coming back. Then last but not least, another one I just never kind of got around to playing, I wanted to, but Katana Zero. That's the wrong way. This was just under 10 bucks and Refuse I'll say a solid, anything kind of 2D and side scrolling, I'm gonna play it, especially when it involves a ninja. Just because I grew up on Ninja Gaiden and the artwork here just looks phenomenal. Katana Zero though, it's a 2D action platformer. It's received some seriously impressive reviews. It's another challenging one, there's no health bar. This is all like one hit and you're dead basically. But it is, to a sense, traditional 2D scrolling platformer, but tactics are kind of the name of the game here. You'll spend just as much time attacking as you will then planning out the next situation that you can see on screen and how you can come out of that alive. So that's it, that's my 2019 Black Friday pickups. There's still a few more I'd definitely like to kind of go out and get. I think I'm probably gonna hold off, honestly. I will be definitely jumping into the eShop though, picking up a few of the games there and you can check out that video in the next few days. But what games did you pick up? Is there a game you wanted but you know just couldn't find? It, it always happens every year. For me, weirdly, I thought it was going to be Raid on 5, but it actually turned out to be Steins Gate on the Switch. Hit subscribe, join the family here. We have a ton of content coming up now over the next few days and the next month, especially leading into Christmas. And we'll see you all on the next Gaming X. Mm -hmm.